Good. You remember Bill O'Reilly? Right. <laughs> We're doing it live. Exactly. All right. Let me make sure that we are live. We are. And are we, hold on, let me make sure we're showing, we're showing our faces. Um, hold on, it's just showing me, let's make sure I got gallery view for both of us. Oh no, we're good, we're good. All right, hello everybody, I'm so excited. So let's see, I'm gonna pull up my phone just so if any comments come on. So welcome everybody, I am Dr. Chelsea Page and I'm so excited because Richard and I have been, I don't even know how we landed in each other's world, but somehow our, yeah. our worlds collided in the big, vast internet land. And we're going to have a delicious conversation around all things, just relationship and what that means, feminine, masculine, and who knows, sex might come up, who knows what we're going to talk about today, but it's going to be good. It's going to be delicious. So for those of you hopping on live or on replay, let yourself be seen and be known, say hello. And I'm going to first introduce myself and then Richard, I'm going to turn the mic over to you so you can introduce yourself to my people. Mm -hmm and our mutual magic that gets to come out. So welcome. And so for me, just a little quickie introduction. I'm Dr. Chelsea Page and I'm an intimacy expert and coach. I've been doing this work for over 10 years, first as a therapist, now as an online coach, helping women be in their naked truth, helping women be fully expressed in their businesses, in their relationships, in all areas of their life. like no more people pleasing. We get to be truly expressed and intimate with everything. So that's the work that I do in all the facets of emotional intelligence, intimacy, intelligence, energetic intelligence, being in our feminine and our pleasure and our magic, but obviously not without the masculine, which I feel we'll need to talk about. <laughs> so Richard, please introduce yourself. And uh, I, I cannot wait to connect with you deeper on this. I'm like excited. <laughs> well, I have also decided that I am now Dr. Richard Earl Lonsberry. Okay. Um, I, I graduated from the class of just now on the fly, <laughs> the academy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, my, uh, my name is Richard Lonsberry. I am a men's coach. Um, the, the LinkedIn versions of that, I suppose, would be like a conscious masculinity mentor as well as an uh, authenticity coach. And what I do is I help men save their sex lives by becoming heroic husbands, by activating their primal instincts, their heart, their, and expanding their consciousness at a much higher level so that they become more aware of both themselves, their partner, and their future and um, really make the shift, right? The, the internal energetic and mental um, and psychological shift from being reactive to life to being a creative force in it. And not just a creative force, but an unstoppable one. And that is where the magic happens, right? That is where um, I help them to inspire and to rebuild attraction in their marriage so that it doesn't grow stale and then they die on the divorced vine. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. I've been divorced myself and I like, I, if only past Chelsea knew the things that I knew now and yeah. the wisdom probably that you d help men with it's no one teaches us this stuff. So it is dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> like it's, it, it's crazy. And I feel, and I think this is one of the reasons I've been, you know, following you and attracted to your work is I feel like you were basically the me version, but for men <laughs> and helping the man side. And so I feel like the, the magic that we provide together on just kind of that whole unit for the yeah. man and woman in relationship is it's massive because it takes it's both sides, right? We can't have just one person doing the work. So knowing that there yeah. is support for both people on either side to do the work and do the magic and have, you know, like you said, create the life that you really want is, I think is one of the most massive things. And mm -hmm. 
But you said, Richard, I'm curious because you said the unstoppable piece. Like that was so no. important. Like this needs to be said. And I I want to hear about that. Like what is unstop what is an unstoppable force and man in a relationship? What does that mean look like? What does that allow things to happen? Mm -hmm. Uh it's a good question. I feel that. Creativity is, that's the beauty of the feminine, right? That's the gift of, of feminine energy. It's color. It mm. literally is life-giving. <laughs> what do y'all do? You make more versions of us, right? <laughs> and uh, um, so there's a component to that. There's a component to, you know, for a man to really tap into his feminine side and to his emotions, to his, the color in his spirit, right? Mm. Um, but when paired, but when paired with an aligned conscious decision, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, to create from both an energetic component, but also from like this, man on fire, you know what I mean? Like, like there's, there, there's, there's only, uh, um, there's a passion, there's a power that comes from a man that's turned on mm, yeah. and, and activated, I feel, right? And there's, a, um, the masculine is always forward, it's directive, you know? And when that is activated within a man, nothing can stop him, nothing does stop him, and as has been evidenced by a lot of the men that I work with. Like, the, a lot of these guys are you know, one of, one of my favorite clients that I'm working with right now, he's a blue collar guy, right? He, he literally moves mountains, <laughs> like, as, no. as a thing, like, deep, <laughs> the whole thing, you know? And, uh, um, and he's like, I never knew any of this. This is all people pleasing, nice guy syndrome, masculine in relationship, right? This and the third, right? Taking complete personal responsibility, all of it. Never learned any of this stuff, right? He rested on his laurels or what he was conditioned with from birth with his parents, et cetera. And, but like, he just bought it. He just bought in and he went all in. And then what he ended up doing, this is after DUIs, this is after an affair, this is after getting as bad as it can get, right? For him. And what does he do? Makes the decision. So and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that she's like, ew, you know what I mean? <laughs> Get away from me. Right. It doesn't matter that she's like, pull, <laughs> right. <laughs> Bullets cannot stop this guy. Not that they're toxic or that that's a real thing, but you know what I mean? Right. We're speaking right. metaphorically here, right? We're very flowery in our language. You and I. But... Oh, I, I love analogies and language. <laughs> we speak in analogous terms. One of us is college educated and the other one is just bald, but, um, <laughs> So the thing is with him, it's just, it's, it doesn't matter what I throw at him, any metaphysical concept, anything that's too over his head, it, it nothing, nothing on heaven and earth stops him mm -hmm. from getting to his goal and operating from this place of unconditional love as well as certainty, right? And I think there's an element too that, that is number one, it's missing in men everywhere, right? Yeah. But um, number two, it's, I think it's important to remember that, that it's available to you, right? There's being a creative force. Good. I'm going to, I'm going to turn on, I'm going to be activated. I'm going to be conscious. I'm going to become aware. I'm going to feel, I'm going to expose myself and open myself to the pain that's in my heart, the resentments, the stories, all of these different things. Right. Okay. I call myself a spiritual enema. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> be like, yeah, Cause to be a full man, you gotta, feel it all mm -hmm. you have to be fully in the experience and to be fully unstoppable and alive you got to be fully alive like that's and yeah. like the women i talk to that's what we want we want like we're sick i was talking with the client the other day i'm like we're sick of floppy dick energy we're sick of it <laughs> like floppy dick energy <laughs> is not it like it's you need to it's like that big dick energy and it doesn't whatever size doesn't matter all those pieces but it's like that firmness literally with the energy and you said about that deciding and I feel like that is something that is missing whether you're a man or a woman in that masculine energy in us is that decision 
to be the creator of your life, but to do the things that actually fulfill that in reality. We can't just, and I was, I had another talk earlier today talking about this, which is we can't just be, because the feminine has the dreams and the desires and the visions and all these pieces, but like, what good does that do if it just lives in our head? Like the masculine, which is interesting because we birth it out, but then we need that masculine support to actually activate it into reality. Otherwise it's again, floppy dick energy. And then you're just all over the place. And that doesn't feel safe to a woman, a man who is either numbed out and shut down or is just not committed and not knowing the direction that he's taking himself. Cause then a woman's like, where the fuck are you going? I can't, I can't connect with an indecisive, um, you know, the, the good guy energy and same thing with the, on my side, I was definitely the good girl energy and no, but like, you can't create with that and do anything with that at all. To your point, to your point and to expand a little bit on it, I just, I got a, I got a more firm footing on really what it means to be unstoppable. And when you think about it, right. What is the number one thing that's keeping anybody from achieving their goals or their dreams? Mm-hmm. Fear. Mm-hmm. What is that? Energy. It's an emotion. Yeah. But a man who is willing to feel everything, who is willing to open his heart to all the pain that life has to offer, all the rejection that comes with going after your dreams, all of, because, you know, everything. Yep. That's why it's called like, like what, one of my mentors, shout out to Tyson Sharp over at the serving circle. He said, life is not about feeling happy. Life is about feeling fully. Yeah. 100%. And so what's it called? Fulfillment. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is the fullest expression. It is opening your yourself as a man to everything that life has and still not batting an eyelash and still moving forward. Yeah. Right. And so that's where the power comes in is when you activate your heart. And you open it up to feeling and experiencing everything. You actually end up becoming a a, um, a safe place. Become a conduit for safety mm-hmm. and security. And what does that end up doing? As a byproduct, the people in his circle, in his sphere of influence, in his family, they end up feeling safe. And what does that trigger in his woman? Well, safety, because, right. and I love that, and I say, hi, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Papanam, is, and I tell the women in my world, like, we want to be full of ourself, and mm, like, I love that. Being like, don't be full of yourself, it's like, no, like, be full, be, be full of yourself, because we want to access and feel yeah. everything, and it's interesting you brought that up, because I literally just had a conversation with a client in Voxer about this of when we don't fear our life, like you said, we don't fear our life when we know we can be with it all and we can navigate the emotions. We can actually open to everything. And, but the unstoppable is we can keep stepping forward, right? Which is that action going forward, but not going like, am I going to get hurt? Am I going to feel pain? Is it going to be, who's going to see me? Or yeah. even the the good stuff, which is the celebration and the heart, the which all the things like right. feel it all fully. Yeah, to which the answer is yes. You, <laughs> you, you I don't, I don't want to date because I don't want to get hurt again. Uh. Well, <laughs> that's what people do. It's we, yeah. We numb ourselves out to protect ourselves from feeling that again, whatever the that, the pain, et cetera. We don't want to feel judged, shamed. We don't want to feel hurt. We don't want to feel all those. But when we allow ourselves to feel all that and to trust ourselves to move through it all, then Mm -hmm. literally the world is accessible to us. And that's when life actually happens. And I feel like when we put this in the context of relationship, it's, I'm just even thinking like, as a woman, I want to be in connection with a man who is not afraid of traveling the world inside of himself Mm. and then allowing the world to be accessible outside of him. A man who avoids his inner worlds, it's like, 
we can tell it's unsafe because like you said, it's like, well, if you're able to be with your emotions and the people around you are going to feel safe because it means that you're not going to shut me out because you're shutting yourself out. It's like, I can lean more into you and let you literally energetically, emotionally, and physically penetrate me because I feel safe because you feel safe in your world. A man who doesn't feel safe with inside of himself is dangerous as fuck to women around him. Yeah. My job. It's uh, <laughs> um, in, in every capacity, right? It's not just like the rapists and the serial killers. It's not oh. just the extremities. It's also the toxic nice guys, which I was, I was their leader. You know what I mean? I, well, I like, was the leader of the toxic nice girls. So I'm surprised we didn't meet. This was ordained. Now. This was ordained is all that you're saying, really, right? Like, I, uh, um, I, I have two points to that. Yeah. Because how much fun are you having? I'm having a blast. Just, just let's it. get that out. I knew uh, I um, this conversation. <laughs> I, we, you and I were in cells before it was cool. Before it got on, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I was a captain in cell before Reddit was a thing before 4chan was right i was just like in my journal just like Susie didn't like me i'm gonna write a poem she's just because she's so hot she thinks she's so vulnerable whatever, whatever. Like, so cool 30, 33 years man jesus christ like at some point enough has to be enough but like i uh, um that is what makes you dangerous right it's just like being being that uh, um it's not being it's not being authentic it is yes. i'll put on whatever face it is that will get me in the door right that will get me you know in your pants but then what right mm. what is the residual effect of that what is the ripple effect of uh oh now i gave myself you know as a woman i gave myself to someone who isn't there who isn't real now i feel cheap and now i'm going to have an entire story about that and now i'm going to pass that on to my kids and, and then I just give myself up. same thing as the people please a woman. It's like I'm gonna give you my body to get the validation, and now we've got oh my gosh, a shit show, a shit show happening. <laughs> and the second thing was, I'd love to hear your stance on this. Uh, um, I have found that, however politically incorrect it may feel or be, to say the reason why I've noticed relationships are such a shit show and a dumpster fire is sort of like this egalitarian, like, like 50, 50 split. If the, there's, there's no roles and there's no rules, mm. right? There are no roles and there are no rules. It's just like anybody can like anyone. Uh, it's a free for all. I feel it's a free for all. And I played that game. I played that game in my relationship, right, with children, like, and so it's like, well, hey, 50-50 split on the bills, or, or in my case, right, like, I was like, uh, I don't, I'm building my dream, so, I, you know, you take care of this, you take care of the kids, you take care of the bills, you take care of all of these other things, even the things around the house, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean, and so, like, uh, when I lived from this anarchistic, just uh, energetic free-for-all, yeah, there were no clearly defined roles. And with no clearly defined roles, there was no attraction. But, and however, whatever anyone wants to project onto that or you feel into it, the truth of the matter is that in order to become attracted to a man, what does he need to be, right? He needs to be in a, a, a polarized, in a highly charged energy in order to be attracted to a woman and devoted right? Devoted to a woman in order to want to do dishes, in order to want to take out the fucking trash. What is she? Demure, (laughs) open, receptive, right? Mm -hmm. Vulnerable. For me, vulnerability is catnip, right? You give me an opportunity to save the day. Why do you think I call this shit heroic husbands, man? You know what I mean? It's just like, it's when you give me an opportunity to save the day, you give me an opportunity to take care of the big scary jar with the big scary lid and the big scary spider, right? And and I, uh, you know, that turns me on to anything. You know what I'm saying? It it it, it activates every cell and fiber in my being instinctively. I I, I experimented yeah. with shit. That's the thing. It was just like I used to think that this was another antiquated, you know, women need to make men a sandwich because a man exists and. 
And I was like, this is so triggering. What the hell is this? <laughs> right? right? You don't, and I think that happens for a lot of people is like, I don't want to fall into the old traditional ways and like suppressive to women or like, you know, yeah. men, or all the icky stuff around it. But like, just even your point of, I want to go back a second before we get too ahead of it is <laughs> the big scary jar is one of the beautiful things, especially on, I know from on the woman's side and the female and, you know, and this works in same sex relationships too. It's just a matter of the energy that's there, but yeah. and the polarizing, right. Is I, I can be like fully in my masculine. I can, but part yeah. of the power as a woman is actually the choosing not to be, because if we are in our masculine, mm -hmm. then we're cock blocking the relationship because then you've got like two like masculine energies trying to like have a dick war going on. Like it's not, it doesn't work. And then women get resentful and they're like, why isn't my you know partner doing this? And it's like, cause you need to back the fuck off and let like move out of the space. So again, your partner can penetrate yeah. that energy. And it's like, I was telling a girlfriend the other day, cause she went out um, to brunch with us, with me and my husband, this was a while ago. And she was like shocked that my husband paid for it and paid for like our side of the um, meal. And I was like, yeah. yeah, I mean, technically it's all of our money and we have like our shared money and all the pieces, but I, he pays for it because again, that's the, it has him feel in his masculine and I feel in my feminine because I receive, yeah. and I get to say, oh my gosh, thank you so much, honey, for taking me out to dinner or whatever it is. Whereas in the past, I would be like, no, I need to pay for half of it. I need to like show myself as a strong, independent woman. Like I don't need no man. And it's like, well, no, I don't need a man but I'm choosing to be supported by that masculine yeah. energy. There's a difference in that. And a lot I'm of- I'm so happy you said that. Get that. <laughs> yeah, what, what clicks in that for you? I'm, I'm so happy you said that because I, um, at the end of the day, I think you boil down everything that a Chelsea, a Richard, any coach, any healer, any service provider, you boil anything down, like you boil what we do down to the single, molecule the nucleus of everything that we do is returning a person mm -hmm. down to choice right yeah. if anyone knows what it what it means to lose everything and then to choose something number one it's me number two it's victor frankel i don't know you decide which order you want to do but if we we talked we talked to a holocaust survivor right <laughs> someone who decided to continue who decided to maintain his integrity and his own sovereignty and his own autonomy, his ability to choose, right? What did he call it? He called it the last of the human freedoms. And I love what you said specifically because it's like to polarize a relationship, it is, it's, it's not mandatory, right? It's not mandatory. You can absolutely be the strong independent woman. You don't need no man. You pay for everything. You be the CEO of everything. You run Google, you run YouTube, you, you know, you have it all, you do it all, be it all, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. And then to what end? And then where, and this is where personal responsibility paired with choice comes in, right? I've noticed is that I love what you said specifically about, I can do all the things and female empowerment is not She-Hulk. It is no. choice. I fucking hate that show, but female empowerment, yeah. it's not, I can be uh, like uh, just up there with the guys in a man's world, female empowerment. The other side of that is I can be the happiest housewife that you've ever <laughs> known, right? I can be, I can, I can be the yes daddy girl mm -hmm. and inspire my man to continue to rise to that occasion. And he'll just devote and spoil and lead. Oh. And the piece of this, the She-Hulk shade, <laughs> Elizabeth on there. Um, well, it's, and I talked about this in my naked experience, which I have for the women in my world of really getting down. I love what you said about like down to the molecules, the like the authentic expression of who we are. That's the naked yeah. essence. And it it is that choice and those pieces. And one of the things that I, I shared with the gals in there is, one of the things I found is the more that I 
am in my pleasure mm -hmm. and I actually expand it to include my husband in that and doing it from a place of, um, I called it the pancake theory. I won't go into all of that. I don't want to ruin it, but I like, I made my husband breakfast with pancakes and on one viewpoint, it could be, oh, I'm being like a domesticated wife. I like have to make him breakfast. And that's what I should do. Guys, we found this. <laughs> it's like, that's what a good wife does, et cetera. And I used to do those things, but it was out of shoulds and have tos and built up so much resentment and mm -hmm. resentment is rejection of the masculine energy. So I was literally pushing it out of my whole field that was happening. So of course I wasn't letting my husband get close to me because I had, I had a whole bunch to heal in my own masculine acceptance. Yeah. But anyways, the point of that is I now have stepped into this place where I'll do those things like clean the house, and I'm like, I love this because it brings, I tap into the pleasure of me as a woman and I just include my husband in that. And I kid you not, the moment I did that, I swear my husband was just like, I, I don't know what it was, but he just like lit up like a fucking Christmas tree. And then he started doing more things and like stepping into his masculine. And I didn't even have to ask. I was like, what? What? That's all I have to do is like, be in my feminine pleasure and stop badgering him and he actually does things like what it's magic so i have two things number one i'd love for you to expand on what he did and how he showed up as a result of you showing up mm -hmm. and two um i think no that's i think that's an all-encompassing thing because the the people who bought into this right because i'm not neither of us are selling anybody on this is the way you know what I mean? Like to me, I do feel that it is only in that it is instinctual. It's rooted in our biology. You know, there's something very natural about, you well, know, celebrating what you are, celebrating as well as who you are. And there's something about men, you know, uh, um, embracing that, right? And women embracing that component that liberates us from this. True. Mm -hmm. But I would love, I'd love to hear more about just like what inspired you to make the decision to instill change and then inspire him to actually lead. Yes. <laughs> Such a good question. And, and even to one of the points you made of like, not necessarily selling this as the way, but I've seen the results of the opposite of, and I see yeah. the um, outcomes of the shifts that I've made energetically, emotionally, all these pieces and how it impacts my life, my relationship. And so it's like, I don't know, it's kind of is to me, I'm like, this, this works. So <laughs> like just saying, you don't have to do it, but just saying, yeah. um, so for me, let's see if I match it. It's such a like big, beautiful question is, my biggest thing was stop emasculating my husband mm. and trying to be the leader by telling him what to do because that puts it like me and mama energy him and little boy energy and that's not sexy so yeah. and that just kills everything and the biggest thing is one of the biggest things is I stopped pointing my finger at my husband to say, you need mm -hmm. to make these changes because I found that where I was pointing to my husband to make changes is actually the place that felt vulnerable for me to make my next move in our relationship. So it was me mm -hmm. trying to bypass my next vulnerable step. And I'm like, no, you go first in this. So really it's what has had my husband shift in more of his leadership is for me to back the fuck off and literally back off, give him space and focus on me. And what do I need to do to show up in the dynamic of the relationship that I desire, that we desire and stop, stop telling him what to do. So mm -hmm. self-leadership actually allowed me to it's like 
deepening more into my own feminine and supported by my own masculine so that my husband can actually step up more into his. And it's like, I, I can't, <laughs> sometimes I'm even like shocked by the magic of it. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it really is that simple. And another yeah. piece, is not letting my people pleaser lead. When I let my pleasure as a woman lead, that is where the most magic happens. But the minute I go into my mind, the minute I go into, well, he needs to do this, or I want him to go first, or I, um, how is he feeling on this? And blah, blah, blah. It's like, it, it just muddies the whole water. It's like, the more I focus on myself, the actual strengthening of the relationship happens. So there's a whole bunch of components around it, but the biggest thing is just back off, like back mm -hmm. off, be in charge of your own evolution and your partner is going to come with you or they won't. And then you'll get the information that you need. But um, most more often cases I've seen is if you actually step forward yourself, then mm -hmm. and be in charge of your own self, like mm -hmm. an adult, and let your partner be an adult <laughs> and be in charge yeah. of himself, then magic happens, really does. I um, I love that so much. I, I noticed the more my, the more my circle up levels, the more I have conversations with the Chelsea's of the world, right? I have noticed that, and these are, these are entrepreneurial like business owner, like they, they, they outsell me, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and outrank me in tax bracket right now. And that's okay. But I, there's a humility. Mm. There is, there's a humility that is unparalleled. Yeah. And I noticed that it was like the most powerful women I know in the happiest marriages have listened to Kendrick Lamar and damn and they, you know they sat down and they were humble because it takes a great deal of humility and trust to to go you know what yep. and and to to their credit approaching this from a place of compassion that is the leap that is the scariest thing to do because how many of us were wounded by our fathers how many of us were wounded by our exes how many of us were wounded by our husbands mm -hmm. and and so that's you know what you did is you opened the door to personal responsibility on his end right like it's just leadership is going first it is not influencing or it's not it's not directing him but yes. it is creating the space for because it always it, it's, that's the way it goes you know what i mean if it's if it's not you it's him if it's not him it's you but someone decides to to let go of the, the tug of war to let go of the rope right well the piece of that if i may that's bringing it up that you're saying is the word that just glowed out and all that is the trust piece and mm. this is what for so many women we ha and men, we've been, as you said, hurt and pained and the wounds that we have from our fathers and mothers and past relationships. And especially when we think of the masculine is when we've been hurt, so hurt and pained by the masculine, we don't trust it. We don't feel yeah. it's safe. And to it like just brings chills in my body because for a woman to surrender and lean back to allow the space of her partner to step in and step up in their masculine what actually is happening in that is it's like you're being <laughs> oh my god the phrase that just came into my mind but i'm going to say it anyways it's like being double penetrated by masculine energy because for for me as a woman to lean back in my own feminine to open and trust i need my own masculine inside of me i need to trust my own masculine has my back mm -hmm. that is that my masculine has got me and simultaneously having my partner's masculine rise up in that space too. So I'm surrounded by masculine energy, my own and my partner. Yeah. If I don't feel safe with the masculine, I'm not going to lean back into my own masculine and I'm not going to want my husband's masculine to come out to play. 
Mm -hmm. Instead, I'm going to shut it down like that. What is those games? Like those uh, bopping it down. Black holes. Yes. On, like <laughs> the yeah. black holes. It's like, no, shut it down, shut it down. But to feel the work to step into that trust that the masculine is safe has been one of the biggest transformations in my business, in my relationship, in yeah. my sex life, in money, in everything. Because a feminine cannot open if the masculine is unsafe. So mm. it's, that's the trust piece is allowing the masculine in another and a partner to yeah. come out and play means I need to trust it inside of myself. And I, on the reverse side, and you tell me is as a man who steps up more in his masculine, Oh, this is a good question for you stepping up more. <laughs> I'm just going to pat myself on the back. I'm like, Oh, this is juicy. Go me fucking yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we got a bunch of ladies hopping on. Hello, ladies. We're all in a conversation, so I'll, I'll go up with um, comments later. But as a man who has stepped up and out of his own good guy energy and been more in his masculine, what in the feminine energy within another and inside of yourself has allowed that to happen. Cause I know as a woman and in my own feminine, I've had to had a new relationship with a masculine, but I wonder if you've had to had a new relationship with the feminine inside of you and in others to let your masculine come up and out and rise and be more in that penetrative safe energy. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um... I can tell you that my my wounding wasn't feminine. Mm -hmm. my, my like I, I was a mama's boy. Like that was the, the, was the, there was attachment there, right? There was the that's where the codependency came in. You know, it was just like I was more safe around women, right? Like my dad was a sentient, you know, like ATM. You know what I mean? And and took us on vacations and stuff, and did the best that he could. God bless him. But I never got a really strong like role model in terms of what it means to be consciously masculine. I just thought, okay, you have you you get a woman pregnant, you pay for everything, and then you die. Like that's kind of like beep bop and robot like that. You know, and and so. You know, for me, I had always felt safe in my feminine energy. It was always open emotionally. I was an artist. I was a musical theater performer for years. A playwright, a poem, you know, that, the whole thing, right? Gotta dance, right? Like the whole, uh, I had no problem with self-expression because that was my safety. Mm. Where I was the most unsafe is with the, my guy friends, with another dude. In fact, I literally, I pro, my brain was programmed to think the hotter the girlfriend, the more masculine approval I get, right? Mm -hmm. That was how I based my decisions <laughs> in relationships. It was like doing anything to get daddy's approval and doing anything to sort of like, you know, my wound was in my masculine heart. It was in this whole men are bad because dad is bad, right? Mm -hmm. and, and men are unsafe and all of these other things. And that was the journey I had to go on for me. And the same, and I thought of it, I remember having a wonderful conversation with a, a friend of mine, Ashley, and we both arrived at the same conclusion. I called masculinity a double-edged sword. She called it a fire. Mm. You know, you can either keep your family warm or it can burn the house down. Yep. And so the same, I had to make peace with the fact that the same energy that when unchecked leads men to rape and pillage to conquer, divide, and destroy is the same energy that that can create trust and that can create a life and that can protect your woman. You know, that's it's it's right there. That's the sword, that's the pendulum, it swings both ways. And so that's where that's where personal responsibility for me ended up becoming the the cornerstone, right? Like the, the mm. fundamental component to this. It was okay. I'm more powerful than I know, but when I activate it, I've already been primed for good by God, by, you know what I mean? By my mom, by like, but now 
there were like hidden caches of energy and like and strength mm. that I I wasn't tapped into. And as a result of that, I lost everything. Yeah. Right. I lost custody of my children because I was so irresponsible that I couldn't raise them, that I had my woman in all of her wounding. Now, this is a recovering heroin addict, right? Like, and we're still together. And now we're on the upward spiral. But back then I couldn't say no to her. I was, I was terrified, right? Because it's like a, 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 the feminine disapproval equals death. Because that was my only source of refuge as a child. Right. Can I Good. just pause that? That Please. the feminine disapproval is like death. And that <laughs> looped in to what I said previously of like when I'm pointing the fingers at my husband, what does he get? He gets feeling of disapproval and <laughs> limptic energy. <laughs> like it's death. It's death to the masculine. So <laughs> it's that place of, I mean, that 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 was just like boom, huge. <laughs> and like in the fire piece of, I've had to grapple with that too, of the same, you know, in the naked experience um, this month, we talked about naked sexuality. And one of the things that I have done in my life is I shut down my sexual self because in the past it was in a destruction energy. And, but that same energy yeah. when filtered through my heart becomes life-giving rather than life-destroying. And from yeah. my heart rather than from the wound itself. And it's to like different degrees. It sounds like you've moved through that too of really understanding the different continuum of the different energies of the feminine. I mean, it's the difference between the divine feminine and masculine and the wounded. It can be yeah. destruction and de destroying, or it can be life-giving and supportive and healing and just like massive expansion. Yeah. Right. And, and I cut you off on your story of like the transformation that you've gone through of being in that darker place and in the wounded place and being in a wounded relationship to then shifting and expanding it and healing it to be in divinity, which yeah. I believe is ac accessible to all of us because to go to your point from before, it is a choice. I don't, and I, this is hard to say, but no matter what you have been through, you can liberate yourself into a new dimension, a new place of creation. Your traumas yeah. in the past, your whatever's in the past, like there's so much that all of us have been through, but there's so much freedom in choosing to do it differently and doing the fucking work to do it because it's not always easy. <laughs> yeah. And I think to, to that, to, uh, I think it's really important to, and I got full license and permission to this from, from Olivia, but The reason why I'm such a huge um, perpetuator and promoter of this now is because it did save my life. Mm. I, I was not man enough, right, to to lead and take care of my family. I really, I really did. I was in such a boyish victim mindset that I, I complained about them. I blamed them for my lack of success in my coaching business. The fact that I had to order Domino's pizza and deliver hot cheesy bread when I can absolutely change lives and play small and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, um, I, I gave her the reins, right? It was just like, you take over while I build my dream and get the fuck off of my back. And I, one day I'm gonna pay for all of these things and whatever, whatever, whatever. And she comes from, a background of abuse, right? She comes from a, like lineage. This is generational. Oh, her yeah. mother's mother was abandoned by the masculine. Her mother's mother's mother was penetrated and raped and you know abused, and it transferred all the way down to the point where I remember when when we got pregnant, right? When she got pregnant and I facilitated, right? But <laughs> she, you know, the first words out of her mouth was like, if you need to go, go. Wow. I got this. I don't, you know what I mean? Push away. I do not need you mm -hmm. for this because what does she have to learn from her mother? Yeah. Men will leave you given the chance. They will let you down. They will leave you by the side of the road with a pregnant teenage daughter, that's it. That pain, right? 
Now, here's the thing. This is in her soul. This is in her heart. Yeah. Okay. She enters in communion with me. Someone who had my masculine wound. And so she has her masculine wound. I have mine. Which is safe because if your masculine is no. not present, guess how safe that is for her because the masculine no. is non-existent. Well, don't skip ahead. This is the juicy part of the damn story, though. <laughs> God damn it. All right. But... <laughs> <laughs> so it comes to it comes to we lose we lose everything right we're homeless in a car for two years and it, and, and so her every all of her wounds flare up my wounds flare up and it's just at some point someone has to captain the ship mm. and when it finally hurt enough for me you know to to step into this and to fall in love with not just who i am because we're all we're resource we're energy good for you here's a cookie with what you are i fell in love with what i was i forgave right i let go of my dad's need to show up and do anything other than give me life that's where the personal responsibility came back in i was like okay this is mine what do i want to do with it what do i want to experience what do i choose what do i choose what do i choose Yes. And so I chose, okay, this is my woman. These are my kids. This is my life. I am their leader. They are on my shoulders. So what do I have to do? I have to summon the will, the spirit from my ball sack, right? And I had to heal my masculine heart to do what? To hold space for hers. Just like right? the word that comes to mind is just like, you asked your like masculine to like, it's like when you said like summon it for my balls, it's like this invitation that like you need to rise, you need to come out and you need to literally, it's like allowing it to penetrate you. I know I keep using that word, but like being call, calling that energy out from a place of choice of I'm going to be calling what this masculine energy is i'm going to do it not from generational past like fucking massive ah i have chills okay keep going <laughs> so but what do you when a man does this is why this is why i love this shit so much when when a man does this he creates space for his woman to heal because let's not do this like not every every single fucking woman on earth has baggage and has wounding oh, around yeah. the masculine. Generationally, for God's sakes. You know how it's only been like what, like 70 years since we let y'all vote? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, like, like <laughs> there's we can we can spend another three hours on feminism and the good and bads of it. But the truth is, systematically, I remember we used to set you guys on fire for like healing wounds with herbs and shit. You remember that? Like it was <laughs> not a spirituality magic shit that I know how to do. We got burned at the stake for that. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yes. And and so, but that that lives in our DNA. It lives in our ancestral DNA. It lives in our memories. It lives in our nervous system. You know. And so, but what what uh, I took responsibility for myself and for this woman, right? That God has given me. What am I gonna, I have to be faithful for it. I have to be faithful to it. How can I do that? How can I serve? I can serve how? I can serve by helping her heal her heart, by healing mine. Not by being her coach, not by being her counselor, not by being her therapist, being mm -hmm. her man. Being her man heals. Being oh. your woman's man heals her. I found it. You found it. <laughs> oh, we got Kendra coming on. Right, right. Oh. Hey, what are you doing? You say hi. Oh my gosh, she's are you so beautiful. Say I'm. I'm so so beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, you are. You're so amazing. Look at you. Take your yeah. bus women. I love it. And it's and she has her magic eight ball. So if that's not indicative of something, oh my gosh, that was so. Ah. Hi. I have something for you. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. So that's Helena. That's the love of my life. But that's also a big reason to wrap this up, right? That's a big reason why I did this. It's it's my mentor, Christian Simpson. Um, he said, what we do not fix within ourselves, our children will inherit. 
Uh, you don't understand until you hear that, until you understand it, until you can see it, right? You see boys that feel out of place in their own skin, mm-hmm. right? And you see girls who are raised to believe you don't need, you don't, you don't need the other half, you don't, right? No. And then when they get older and they want to engage in communion, in relationship, I was taught that I don't need you. Well, I was taught that you're a bitch. (laughs) And so thus the the sins of the father and we perpetuate it, but it it had to stop with me. As far as I'm concerned, at at least in, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when uh, um, that's why this is so important that's why the heroic husband exists it's because you have it within you as a man to heal your woman's heart and to inspire her to open and to change the conversation she has in her head and in her heart and her soul about what it means to be a man to have a man to feel well it's And I talk about the generational pieces too and what we pass on. And sometimes it can feel like it's just big to all the generations and say it stops here. And it is hard work because we're not just dealing with our own in this lifetime experiences, but those before and before and passing down, you know, systematically, cellularly in our own generations, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's big but it's what we're passing on in the world that we're building, like the healing in the masculine, in the feminine, and what we're passing on to the world beyond us. It's like that legacy that we get to leave is like massive. So even though it's hard work sometimes, it's, and one of the kind of in wrapping this is that what I'm hearing from myself and from you is taking ownership of that choice of doing the work that we individually need to do so that we can be uh, passing that down and living that within our life and future whether it's we have kids or not there's still a legacy that we leave behind what energetic and emotional legacy are we leaving behind is it going to be one that's wounded and hating the other energy and shut down and dismissive Or are we going to be in, leave a legacy of intimacy with our energetics as us as men and women? Like that, that is essential for our world moving forward. And that's, that's what we, both of us do every damn day. Like I, I'm just, whoo, I'm fucking proud of me, of you, of everyone that's here. I have lovelies. Oh my gosh. Thank you for tagging. Yes, please tag anybody, share this on your social. Like these are the conversations that just ignite us and expand us and activate us and do your part in healing yourself and know that that heals those around you. It changes those around you. It like spreads out to everybody around us. So, oh my gosh, we, we could have we're going to have to have another conversation because this is just like amazing and magical. You got me. <laughs> I know our, our worlds have so beautifully intertwined. I love that. Yes. What energetic legacy do you want to leave behind and stepping in and doing the hard things because that's what shifts the world. So I, I know that you are leading men to being more naked. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk with you because I can't do this alone. And we all need to come together to really do that shift to have powerful men and women be in this world. So any last thoughts that are coming through for you, Richard? And also, please, 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 I want us to share how to be more in our world. Obviously, this is going to be shared, you know, mutually on our social, but follow all the things. You know, I actually... I'm not worried about where my next client is coming from. So I'd actually like to take a moment to speak to your people. Please, please, please. Um, more of me exist. But also quite honestly, I just, um, if you're watching this, if you're watching this woman, if you're listening and if you're, 
lurking mm -hmm. and afraid and wounded and are tired. I do not believe that you were created to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. I believe that you were designed to be radiant and to enjoy life, not to survive it. And I cannot recommend enough. And I want to invite you to opening a dialogue with Chelsea in her work and what she's doing. Any trust or goodwill that I've built with you or rapport, I invite you to at least, if nothing else, open the conversation to heal your feminine heart. And I also make myself available to experience the safest masculine on a platonic level, <laughs> you can. <laughs> uh, ladies, whoever's like, I know there's ladies watching right now. Can we just let that in? <laughs> like my body is just like, is even like you said, our, our, we're meant to be radiant and open and bring light to this world. And that requires the opening of ourselves and the feeling safe with the masculine and just even what you said Richard of there's more of me out there I think I know there are clients of mine and have in the past and either women listening to this that don't believe that to be true because of the wounded that we witness so often and it's we design and that's to the men who you help in your world is uh, the women are waiting and wanting you to rise. Just gonna, sorry. To do the work that so many men aren't and haven't in the past. And it's a gift. It really is. And I, there's, it, there is a point to helping the women in my world to heal for themselves, but so many women crave that relationship and it requires the masculine, it does. So I thank you for your work. I really do. Cause it's like a dream come true. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know this was coming out. I told you- I have that effect on people. Well, it's... I told you at the beginning of this before we hopped on camera that like I can already feel your masculine coming out in the safety of that and it sometimes can be scary to women when we're, we're used to the chaos and we're used to men being oppressive rather than supportive. And mm -hmm. it's going to take a mutual experience of a new way of men and women relating in the world to trust in your divine masculine and to be patient with us. <laughs> yeah. I think to, to just to what you're saying, and though I know we both got to go, but yeah. um, that's what you're doing right now is leadership, though. Mm -hmm. Most a lot of women are, are you know, it, unfortunately, this is as crass as I can think of, just is spiritually constipated, right? Like it's emotionally like I can't feel I don't want to feel this. this feeling is weakness now feeling is I'm in my masculine, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. plugged. Thank you for demonstrating what it means to be fully open and expressive because that's that's a gift yeah. to your people. It's the difference between numbness and being naked is letting all of it come through. So, oh my gosh. I thank you. I, thank you for this, by the way. Jesus Christ. I know. <laughs> like I know there's lots of those watching <laughs> and live and on replay, but this was such a gift. I think I know we played just phone tag for a while mm -hmm. and I think it today was the day that it all happened so uh so of course you guys are all adults you know where to find us how to connect with us and we don't need to lay that all out so I'm gonna 
leave that. Oh, I love you guys. I love you so much. And ah, uh, let's go do the work. Let's go do the work to rise and shift the way this world is is lived in. Ah, uh, let's let's get naked. Be naked. Rise. And let's. Let's. Thank you so much, Richard. That was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll talk. Thank to you. you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Bye.